speaker is Yufeng Zhao, who will be telling us about an aesthetic approach to the integration of faith and science. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Yufeng, and I'm a teacher at Corbin University teaching physics. So my uh, topic today is just uh, uh, to use the, the uh, Genesis chapter 1 to extract some, uh, some universal principles of aesthetics. I call it aesthetic principles to apply to science. So uh, Genesis chapter 1 is uh, normally viewed by the secular society as the mythology. Even Christians, we treat that, we treat that narrative simply just as a narrative. But the question here we want to ask, is really Genesis chapter 1 just a narrative or it reveals some big ideas? So this is mainly the purpose of this study. So to do this, to, to, to find an answer to this question, I did a cross-cultural study by comparing the oldest Chinese classic, the Book of Changes, to Genesis chapter 1. This picture shows that the basic derivation of the Book of Changes has exactly the same structure as Genesis chapter 1. What does it mean? It means the metaphysical foundation of the two narrative are exactly the same. But interestingly enough, the Book of Changes use the uh, images, or symbolic images, not imagery in literature, not the normal imagery in literature. But if you read the format of Genesis of the Wine, you find the imagery is very carefully designed for a purpose more than deeper than just the narrative. It's actually through the comparison, I see all the universal principles actually emphasized in the, in the Book of Changes is actually revealed in Genesis chapter one. So based on the picture you can see, can we see for, you can see that the, you know, immediately they both actually start from God or the ultimate one. So you can see that there's a, there's a uh, clarification here. The Book of Changes is not dualism. The, you know, a fundamental misconception about the Book of Changes is it is all about the dualism, but it is not. Based on this picture, clearly this is the monism. So based on the ultimate truth, the ultimate one, which is equivalent to God. So then why people just misperceive that this, uh, the Book of Changes is dualism? dualism. This is because this misconception did, uh, does point to something that is very important due to the holy nature of God. He always created the things in two modes. For contrast, this is the first universal principles I want to show here. So based on the holy nature of God, he always creates the two modes. And uh, one is the one one mode is uh, similar to God's nature, and the other one is just the opposite. And this is called the paradox reality or fundamental tension. The fundamental tension basically tests that uh, the spiritual reality is primary and physical reality is secondary. And we call this primary as truth, the secondary as falsehood. Doesn't mean, that does not mean it's unreal. It is real but we just call it falsehood to, opposing, to oppose the primary truth. So the two modes really reveals something very uh, contradictory to our secular worldview. This is biblical worldview. So, and we call the spiritual thing as truth. The physical, physicality is falsehood. This is called a fundamental tension. Fundamental tension is the eye opener it creates, it always forges conflicts and the contrast. It opens our eyes to see the truth because we are often deceived by what we see in this world, which is totally against the, 
the phenomenon the phenomenon we, uh, we see is, is mostly against the, the truth. So this type of fundamental title of paradox reality is actually supported by modern science. If you consider the two pillar theories in modern physics, one is the theory of relativity and another is the quantum mechanics, you will find the, the, the proposition of both theory pointing to the absolute, absoluteness of the meaning of physical law and the secondary of matter. The theory of relativity says that in order to ensure the physical law are absolute, then you, we, have, we are forced to believe or to admit matter is relativistic. Even space and time is relativistic just to ensure that physical law must be absolute. Uh, similarly, uh, similarly, the quantum theory also tells us that you know, the matter itself must be uncertain or probabilistic in order to ensure that physical laws are certain, 100% certain and deterministic. So both theory pointing to the point of paradox reality, that spiritual reality or the meaning is primary. So yeah, this is the starting point of our study. And as uh, Lao Tzu said, this is the gate to all wonders. So that's why I call it, these are aesthetic principles because you see the beauty. And uh, the scripture gives this nice pattern, day, night, and day go transi transit to night through evening, night transit to day through morning. And this is repeatedly pre uh, presented in chapter one, Genesis chapter one. And uh, the book of changes give a deeper interpretation. And it's, this pattern is called a universal cyclic, uh, cyclic, uh, cyclic paradigm, showing the regeneration of all the created world, all the natural resources regenerated through this par uh, paradigm. And this is actually called the regeneration in the book of changes. And this is a generalized pattern of salvation. Because this is the pattern of salvation. God, Jesus from God, sent to sinners, and sinners through believing in Jesus testify God's power or God, God's glory. And this is also the process of how God creates the human being, a living soul from dust. So you can see that this universal cyclic paradigm indeed is representing something deep, which is from the perspective of general revelation, which is the process of generation of all natural resources. And in the, uh, from the per perspective of special revelation, it is the pattern of salvation. So this, so, okay. So, so this uh, pattern is not just, uh, you know, a narrow uh, pattern for the, for spirituality. But it's also also useful for see the foundations. You know, it shed great light to the foundations of science. If you look at the, all the classic physics, all the branches, major branches of classic physics, all each branch has exactly the four fundamental laws. Why it's not five? Why it's not three? Exactly four, and they are logically related to follow the, the pattern of universal cyclic paradigm. And one represents truth, the other represents falsehood, and one is called the justifier, the other is the testifier. So even, I will explain this uh, later in details, but even the so-called the sum of rule, the rule of sum, the structure property, structure property relationship in chemistry and material science is just a part of this, uh, one link of this universal cyclic paradigm. The full, the full principle is like this. The codes, including physical laws, laws of quantum mechanics, and, uh, uh, you know, and the rules, and relates the rules, determines the structure through a mechanism, which is the, how the microparticles are moved or interact with each other. 
And the structure determines the property. The property ref reflects the, uh, the laws of quantum mechanics or the codes. So this is the type of uh, pattern we emphasize. This, uh, this is the type of pattern of uh, cell vision. So I would regard science is, uh, is the redemption of human ignorance by the grace of truth rather than a triumphant conquer of the end of the world by humanity. So this is, uh, this is something very interesting. It gives uh, us the uh, you know, more accurate perspective of, uh, of scientific discovery. So we have the uh, paradox of reality and fundamental tension as the first principle. And the second principle is the, is the universal cyclic paradigm. And the creation of the, the six day creation can be classified into three pairs, uh, three pairs, day one and day four, day two and day five, day three and day six. And each pair gives another universal uh, principle of reality. So day one is principle of yin yang, and day two is principle, uh, day two is principle of void and field. Day three is the principle of hard soft. So they are, these are the first three days. I just use a very, very simple, highly simple, uh, simplified images to show the universal principle. And these later three days use a diverse the creation to show how the un universal, that the universe is ordered aesthetically following this reciprocal replication. The reciprocal mean, uh, by reciprocal, I mean, it's, it's both negative and the positive way. For example, this is the, the day four, you create the, you actually uh, uh, re replicate the day and night. Day is the positive way, which is the, you know, the minor part is the sheet. The, the major part is the light. And night is just the opposite. The major part is the darkness and the minor part is light. So, so it's the day five, the fish and the bird. Fish is the field in void. Bird, uh, sorry, no, the birds are fi uh, field in void. Field in void. Fish are void in field. So that's day, uh, day six, the plants and the animals are just the reciprocal replication of the hard and soft. And the animals can be reflexible because they can move everywhere. So it's but it has a rigid bone system, rigid body system. So it's hard and soft. But the plants are soft and hard because they, are, they cannot move. But they are actually, they have life. Their inside is active. So you can see the order of the universe is very transparent. With these three universal principles, we can even see the aesthetic order of science. So let me first uh, uh, explain the principle of yin yang. The yin yang has a very rich meaning in the Book of Changes. All these are meanings are the major meanings. But for uh, from the perspective of physics or science, we focus on the energy and message because the message gives you order, gives you order, gives you a meaning, and uh, energy provides the driving force. The, these are the two major yang components in physics. They, Let's think it deeply. What is the origin of energy? What is the origin of message or information? So, so when Newton uh, creates the, uh, you know, founded the, the classical physics, he worked out the first, the three, uh, the three fundamental laws of motion. But the, four, the universal law of gravitation was the, was the discovery that even Newton himself feel that is uh, unbelievable. This is a quote from Newton. He said, it is inconceivable that inanimate brute, brute matter should, without the mediation of something else which is not material, operate the up on and affect the other matter without, uh, without the mutual contact. So this shows us how actually Newton and his contemporary was confused or was puzzled by this law, universal law of gravitation. And the, the significant, you know, significance of this universal law of gravitation is really the first principle of force. 
So it is a transcendent force field that is codified the power of God and is, uh, determines the order of everything. It's actually make everything in order. It keeps everything in order. And also it is a source of energy because the, it conserves energy. And of course, this uh, for universal gravitation is just the first discovered, uh, discovered force field. Now we now know we have four types of force, uh, fundamental forces, right? Even the solar energy is basically caused by the uh, strong, nuclear uh, strong, nu strong nuclear force. So you can see that this codified power, codified got the power as the source of energy is really the origin of both energy and the information. So this is so important for physics and for science. It is without this kind of codified power and energy uh, and energy and information. The, according to the second law of thermodynamics, everything will be messed up. You have no information. So, so Max Planck can get very deep, very deep uh, interpretation of this. He said that all matter originates and exists only by virtue of the force. So you see, you know, we, we probably can understand it exists in a form, right? But actually Planck said this is not enough. This actually goes deeper because, because the force itself creates the matter. And we now understand this is totally true because the energy creates the mass inside the nuclear. Because the, when the force is so strong, the mass of the nuclear particle, uh, of, the, of the nuclear, let's say a proton or a neutron, if you count the mass of the proton or neutron, it is it just much, much bigger, the mass is much bigger than the quarks inside. And the 97% of mass is actually creates the, is the bounded the energy. So Max Planck deeply understand that since that time. And this is actually, you know, supports the paradoxical, paradoxical reality. So, yeah. And the Chinese philosophy a thousand years ago realized that when matter is formed of energy, when matter is formed, from energy, sorry, to be formed from energy, the information must be automatically encoded in its form. With form, you always see information. If there's no information, you have no form at all. So the form of matter will collapse. And even the very existence of matter will, be, will collapse without the form, without the information. That's why for the even for the simplest system, not the, just the very complex, very complex biological system, need information. Even the very simple system, like a molecule, like an atom, without the information, without the, quantum, the rules of quantum mechanics, and you don't have any form. That's why when we are doing first principle modeling of any materials, you write uh, millions of lines of code. Why? Because you have, to, you have to use that information, otherwise you don't have any form. You don't have any form. So you can see that the ancient thinks are really deep, much deeper than many of the modern scientists philosophically. So this principle of yin yang actually uh, you know, uh, is everywhere. So from the positive charge and negative charge in the fundamental building block of matter, to the electromagnetivity of elements, to the type of chemical reaction, even the flavor of food is created by this type of polarity. Without the polarity, this is just fiber, no flavor. But if you introduce the polarity with some, some elements with the, with the bigger electronegativity, you immediately create all kinds of flavors. So this, this all supports that principle of yin yang uh, in the created world. So this is a recent work with, I did with Rice University and this uh, Dr. James Turo's group recently since has done some very nice uh, thermostatic graphing. He asked me to model the, the process. You know, initially I just used the uh, constant temperature and I found it is almost impossible for the structure to form in the 
a practical time scale, and normally it forms it always forms some some kind of amorphous structure. But if I use the principle of yin yang and set the temperature fluctuates from the high to low and repeats the refluctuation, and the crystallization very nice crystallization is formed in a very short time scale, which is about 100 picosecond. So this is this. This is actually mimics their experimental condition, uh, which is very far from equilibrium. And temperature fluctuation is very, uh, is, uh, is dramatic. So the void and fill, you can see that the void and fill, this is a scripture, and this Lao Tzu gives the example, very simple example, shows that the void is so critical for activity. And before Roosevelt discovered this model of atom, everybody believed the atom is just a solid particle filled with matter. But his discovery was startling to the people because he found that actually inside the atom, basically, it is just a void. And 99% of the mass is concentrated in a, in, a, in a part called the nuclear, which the volume is almost negligible compared to the whole volume of the atom. So with this free space, and you create this electronic states quantum, uh, using quantum mechan uh, mechanics. So you can see the high tension, high tension inside this building block of materials. And uh, also we find it in chemistry, and these elements, the electronic shells are totally filled, so they are inactive. Only you have void, you, it, it becomes active. Uh, it is also true for solid. If it is totally filled and totally empty, then it is not a, it is it is inactive. This is a same, this is a, a insulator for conductor. If you want the electron to be conducted, the the valence band must be part, partially filled. You cannot fill them all. So this is active. This is not active. And even for the light, if you pack the same space with all the with the full spectrum of of light, then you kill the color. You kill the color. Only you actually you disperse the in space. You see the color. So this is also the principle of void and fill. So hard soft is reflecting the fundamental properties of matter. So particle wave particle duality is actually reflection of this principle. And the most interesting is that the hard nuclear moves in a soft classical way but the soft electron confined in the hard quantum uh, uh, in, in, in the, by, the electro, by the very strong quantum force, it will be confined in a very hard quantum mode. It has a discrete states. And this discrete states, once it is filled by electron, it becomes so hard and it even sustains a high pressure, extremely high pressure at the center of the earth, which is the three and a half million bar. You can see that even at such extremely high pressure, you cannot break the, the, elect, the field electron structure. It be, a soft mode of motion becomes so hard inside. And all this type of uh, physical design, uh, design is observing this principle, uh, principle of hard and soft. But basically, these the five universal principles can be uh, read from Genesis chapter one the paradoxical reality or fundamental tension. And the second one is the, uh, the, the second one is the cyclic paradigm. And, uh, and then the rest of the three, the principle of yin yang, principle of hard and soft, and principle of void and field. Thank you. Thank you, Yifeng. Can you tell us more about where yin and yang come from or the book of changes the, the individual or group of people who wrote that or created, are they, how would you describe them and where might they have found yeah, their inspiration from? Basically, a yin and a yang is the, the, uh, the, the book of changes called the two modes. Two modes, they are actually constructed, uh, constructed to each other because, uh, because yang is uh, representing the truth and the yin representing the, the falsehood. The falsehood is basically the created thing, and truth is the creator. This is the original meaning. But now, it is, uh, when it is applied to the creates the world, it's just something that is more active. It's called a young. 
something is more ordered, it's cutting out. Something is less active or uh, disordered, it's cutting in. So this uh, has a basic, has a very rich meaning, but uh, with Chinese uh, classics, uh, you know, just use that as the symbols, like a mathematic symbols, rather than just a very specific uh, concept. Uh, thank you. Uh, very interesting. Lots to think about. A lot of it uh, resonated, and there's a lot of beautiful symmetry in your talk. Uh, and you might have just started to address uh, my question, uh, but the, the only part that made me a little uncomfortable was equating uh, earth and physical with the falsehood. And I'm wondering if there's like a moral problem, you know, with those uh, comfort that I've always gotten is is thinking of the physical world act not as not as bad but as good and yeah. worthy of our consideration. Yeah. So I wonder maybe if if falsehood, if I shouldn't understand that to mean bad or or that is what you mean. That's a, that's a very good question. This this is indeed a very subtle thing because when the ancient China thinkers uh, you know, use some concept, they actually they are just you know they are using it not for good or, or, or bad. They are really representing just the two opposing thing elements. You know they are more broader. They're much more broader than good and bad. Uh, of course, uh, when I say that uh, yang is more similar to God's nature, and the yin is more similar uh, to to like uh, to the created the world, but the, the, um, I have no uh, no intention to say that that is bad because when God created all things, is good in, in God's eyes. But they aesthetically, aesthetically, they compensate with each other to show the harmony which is in, uh, in, in God's creation. So I think if I you know, remember what my mom taught me from a Chinese culture, I think yin and yang came from Taoism. From what? Taoism. Uh, do right and yeah, 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 Taoism, yeah, Taoism. Yeah, Taoism. Yeah, that's right. Okay, <laughs> and the Book of Change is uh, Yi Jing, Yi yeah. Jing, right? Yi Jing, okay, yeah. so so my only little caution is mm. that there is a element. I'm not saying you implied it. Mm. It's just I'm saying in terms of public communication, mm. there is an implication in the general understanding of Taoism that the belief that the world operate by these principles as a thing to believe, as a religion. Uh, and that as a person of faith, need, we need to be very cautious to point out the difference because the God who created the universe is above these Taoism, is above these principles. And that's how he, uh, Jesus can, you know, calm the sea and God can part the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. And the God is above his creation versus, you know, I'm not saying I'm an expert in Taoism. Whatever mm -hmm. I know is from my history. But I, if I remember correctly, and my mom could correct me if I re you know, remember her teaching incorrectly, that there is a belief of religion that the Taoism operate in this earth as our belief. Like if we put our trust in this way of yin yang work, life is good which is very, very different from Christianity yeah, to say, true. my God mm -hmm. created the universe that whatever he created is under him. And he, if you want to part the Red Sea, he part the Red Sea. And if you want to, you know, uh, calm the storm, he calmed the storm. And that's a very interesting distinction. I just want to point that out. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think this is a very good uh, uh, comment. Uh, it is quite misleading because the Taoism as a religion developed out of the Dao uh, Te Ching very, in a very late stage of history. And it's uh, mostly distorted. It's actually, the, the Book of Changes, the core part of the Book of Changes is really created, uh, you know, about 4,000 years ago, which is, you know, which is much earlier than those, uh, than even Confucius' commentary on the on the Book of Changes. So, uh, yeah, a lot of religions are based on Taoism, but I, that's I believe personally they are actually idolized something from Taoism. They are not the original Taoism because I consider Tao Te Ching is just like a commentary 
on the Book of Changes, because the Book of Changes is just a very old book. So uh, philosophical commentary uh, is given by Lao Tzu in the form of Tao Te Ching, and uh, another called the Ten Winds, Ten Volume of Commentary, commentary on the on the Book of Changes is made by Confucius, is actually considered, considered now as part of the classics. So yeah, there's a difference. We have to be very cautious not to idolize, idolize the, 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 the classics. Yeah. So I'll, yes, I agree with that. So I'll make one short comment. Mm. So I think the differentiation is your source of trust. Because I do know Chinese yeah. that their source of trust is in this yum yang Taoism. Mm -hmm. yeah. Our source of trust is God Himself. I think that's the major dis dis differentiation. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank think you. we have uh, one more uh, up here, I think, and that'll probably have to be it. Uh, thank you for this presentation. It was wonderful. Um, I think you talked about the intermingling of contraries, right, with yin and yang, and uh, there are a lot of parallels even in Hinduism and Buddhism. And I'm just wondering, in terms of the Christian faith, how you'd explain transcendent agency, for instance, God, within this context. Um, yeah, uh, good question. I think, uh, you know, God, uh, we should not consider the yin yang as God. We should, uh, we should even have to avoid to consider the yin yang represent the two parts of God. That's not true. That's certainly not true. Yin Yang is the two modes in God's creation, two modes of God's creation. They are all kind of uh, language to characterize God's creation or to char uh, characterize the aesthetic order of the creation. They have, they are, you know, there's nothing, nothing we should consider that uh, uh, these two parties is uh, just a part of God. No. Let's thank uh, Yu Feng and all the speakers. Thank you.